This is section 5.1, Approximating Area. In this video, we're going to go through an example problem that's really similar to number 9 in your book. So this problem asks us to calculate R3 and L3 of this function here on this interval from 0 to 3, and then compare our estimated values with the actual area underneath the graph. So if you remember, in this section, uh, we learn how to approximate area under a graph by drawing rectangles over our function, calculating the area of each rectangle, adding it together, and using that as our estimate. So let's go ahead and work through this problem. So the first part we're going to do is calculating R3, or just our right endpoints um, of our rectangles. And if you remember in this section, they gave us this formula for calculating R3. But let's go ahead and go through what each part means really fast. So this delta x, that's just the width of each rectangle. Oops. Um, that's just how wide it is. The f of x sub j, that's just whatever the y value is at each of our x values. In other words, whatever the height is of our rectangle. Because remember, to calculate area of a rectangle, you just multiply height by width. And this fancy squiggle over here, that just means summation. So add the area of each of our rectangles together, and that'll give us our estimate. OK, so to find each of these parts, we'll start with our delta x. Delta x is always found by the difference in our interval divided by however many rectangles they want us to find. So our interval is just 3 minus 0 divided by however many rectangles they want, which in this case, we look at the subscript. They want three rectangles, 3 minus 0 divided by 3. That just gives us 1. And that's our delta x, or in other words, our width of each rectangle. Now to find our y values, I'm going to go over here to this crudely drawn graph and <laughs> plot all my um, x values and see what my y values are. So for right endpoint, that means that we start at the starting value, which is 0, and move over one width to the right. In this case, our width is 1, so we move 1 to the right, go up to our function, move over to axis, draw a rectangle. And do the same thing for the second one. I move over 1 because that's my width, and I go up to the function and over. And here are my three rectangles. Now to find what my y values are at each of these points, I can just look at my x value and plug it into my function. So for this first um, rectangle, my x value is 1. So I find what f of 1 is. f of 1, I plug in 1 for x, I get 2 plus 3, that's 5. Do the same thing for my next um, rectangle. My x value is 2. When I plug 2 into the function, I get 7. And for my third rectangle, my x value is 3. When I plug that into the function, I get 9. And remember, I'm trying to find the area of each of these rectangles and adding it together. So I can find what 5 times 1 plus 7 times 1 plus 9 times 1. This is just each of my heights multiplied by the width and adding it together. And when I add all this together, I get 21. So this is the area I approximated under my function by using my right endpoint rectangles. All right, now we're going to do the same process using our left endpoint. So our left endpoint, we have a similar um, formula given in this section. And same thing, delta x, that's our width. And f of x sub j, that's the height of each rectangle that we're using. Find delta x the same way. Difference in the interval divided by number of rectangles they want, which is 3 again. So my delta x in this case is also 1. And going over to my function, when I plot this out, um, whereas with the right endpoint, I had to move over one to draw my first rectangle. Left endpoint means that you start at wherever this starting interval is. So I'm going to stay at zero, move up to my function, and move over one. Here's my first rectangle. Do that again. Move up to the function, move over, and third time, that's my third rectangle. And same thing, to find my f of x sub j, I just look at where all my endpoints are and look at what my uh, value of the function is at that x value. So my first one is f of 0. Plug in 0 and you get 3. My next one is f of 1, which we already calculated, is 5. And my last rectangle is f of 2, which again we already calculated um, is 7. And I do the same process, multiply the width by each of the heights. And also instead of writing it out like this, I could factor out the width, or factor out this 1, so it becomes 1 times whatever my heights are, 3 plus 5 plus 7. Multiply all this out, and you should get 15. 
So 21 was the area estimated using my right endpoints. 15 was the area estimated using my left endpoints. And I'm going to con compare both of these values with what the actual area is underneath my curve. So looking at my right endpoints, I see that all the rectangles that I drew, they had extra area above my function that I didn't really need to calculate. That's extra area that I found. So that means that this value here is an overestimation. In other words, my right endpoint approximation was greater than the actual area underneath this function. And similarly, for my left endpoints, I see that each of the rectangles I, draw, I drew, it was missing a part of the function. That means that it was an underestimation. In other words, L3 is less than the actual area underneath my function. And that's it for this problem. So first, we had to find our delta x by calculating the difference in our interval divided by the number of rectangles that they wanted us to find. And then we just found all of our corresponding y values with each of those x values. We multiplied them together to find the area of each rectangle, then added them up and got our approximation. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sid Rich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.